welcome to the October Gallery. I'm very glad you could all come. It's obviously a cold and uh, not too good day, but thank you for coming out. We are with the artist Govinda Shah, whose work is on the walls. And I'm very much looking forward to talking to Govinda. But I thought, I thought the easy way, I want, to, I want to talk about a, a lot of different things. I want to talk a little bit about the earlier Nepalese art, the tradition that um, Govinda comes out of. And I thought that also to give a sense of Govinda's own trajectory as an artist, um, I thought the easy thing to do would be to watch a film that Govinda made. Um, it's, 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 it, it's a short enough film, 12 minutes or so. Um, just to give an idea of who Govinda is and where he's coming from and some of the things he's done before he comes to England and the results of which we see here. थाई नपाए गरे पाउने गरी पेंटिंग में थे लागे रहे चुके ड्राइंग करने देवी देवता को कॉपी करने चित्र करने मेरे सबे नोटबुक और चाहिए पैक कौन थे कि कोर्स को थामा आपने इच्छा होने सार को चित्र रुको रो दाखिल पक्कू पिटाई खाने गौर पड़ी बार चाहिए एकदम साधारण तल्लो स्थार वाला से आंखों पक्कू लेकर दाखिल तर आमा को अठोट थी कि दस साल बाद नहीं बच्चा और लेते हैं पढ़ाव नहीं बने अब दाय और लेके आओ ना टीमी लेते हैं अब गांव के कॉलेज में चल पढ़ाई लेने चुके मौत तो चेंबोन ना चाहने थे मले दिते इंटरेस्ट बनी थी ना मैं सेल्स दिए रहा एग्जाम सी दिया रहा बोली पढ़ते नहीं भाई को दिल्ली दिल्ली गए साढ़े चार पांच वर्षों में लेते हैं काम करें साइनबोर्ड लिखने ठुल ठुल होर्डिंग बोर्ड और लिखने सिटीजन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स मारुती सुजो की फैक्ट्री तीन और वहाँ पर निकले लेके काम करें तो बाल में पेंट करने तो इसे अली चैलेंजिंग है तो मतलब तेरे को देरी जाऊँगी मेरे उम्र चाहे सोलह स अनु आप और नहीं होती हो नुमक काम करते मेरे दो तीन वाला था ही कैटवन में पोस्ट में आओ दाखिले सागर आठ बॉस पार्क में चलो त्याग काम करते मेरे घर को छोड़ मैं थे केजी रंजीत वाले थे आर्टिस्ट को कर रहे थे एक दिन मैं साइनबोर्ड लिखना जा दाखिले वहाँ लेते पेंटिंग सुखे रहे को देखे बायरा पे� अन्य मैं लेते हैं सॉर माने पनी ये सो वाटर ये सॉरी पेंटिंग करने से गई दिन उसने वाले हेरा मौत हैं सी कौन दीना तर्ती में चित्र कर रहे हैं वाले मैं इसको गाइड कर दियो ला ये सो ये रह दियो ला क्या सो गार्नु परसों बन रहा वड़ा हिमाल को पेंटिंग बनाए लिए रोगाएं देखने वाला हो हो राम रो बना� यो साइनबोर्ड कहाँ कर रहे थे क्यों कर रहे थे तो सब लोग त्याग बोले थे मलाई से तो मेन से मो यो सबे मेरे लाइफ को देरे ही ठुलो क्रेडिट से मके जी रंजित लेने दें चो अलिपने वहाँ से ना वहाँ ले गुरु ने मान चो पंच संतावन साल थी रा साइकिल यात्रा कर रहे थे त्यों बेले में जब बचे देश से गिरे युद्ध में थे मैं एक और गोरु दस्ते कर रहे कि सामान न डोते हैं तेरे केयर करी ना मेरे साइकिल में मोस्ट उधर कर रहा करी मोर देन सेवेंटी वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव किलो सामान थे इलाम बारा शुरू करने मैं चंडी चंडी तीन महीना 
इमोशनल थियर्ड मानेहर को सहभागिता मैं जहाँ भी पाए सहयोग तो कुरे छोड़ मानेहर हाथी सामने तीर आपको कह लाथे वैशाख जेठ तीर जब नेपालगंज तीर पुगे तो अब तब इमेजिन कर सकता अलकत्रे रोड तो पगल थी महेन्द्रगरसम पुग्ता खेल मेरे मसंग सत्तर अस्सी वाला झंडे झंडे पेंटिंग भैस तो थुप्रिया थी कैनवास थुप्रिया थी अर सामान अकुमुलेट भर टन्न भैस थे कि तर दुर्भाग्य को कुछ ये भो कि शांति को लगी गए कि क्रांति को लगी कराए जस्ते भो तो बेला को चित्र चाहिए तो जो मेरा भावना थी एक्कीसों शताब्दी कला और शांति को शताब्दी तो चित्र से मैं शांति समर्पित भर कर देश में शांति को लगी कुछ स्थान हो संविधान बनाने न्यू में पूरे तराई ने कर्फ्यू लगाया तो आपने ठावनी भाग हो आमाक अंग तो होनी चाहे धोती विदेशी बिहारी बने गाली कर मं मर मैं तई ठाव को मं होनी मैं सामजिक रूप में लिंचु राजनीतिक भाग जब म साइकिल यात्रा कर मैं मधीसे कस तो मधीसे हो साइकिल न चढ़ देश छोड़ वाने तो कस थे अलग आएर कस्त हो शांति को काम लेकर काम करने धेरे मं मस्त पील मैं ये अलग जो चित्र जलाए थे खास तो चित्र ती बेला को थी जो मैं पंद्रह वर्ष अगड़ी साइकिल यात्रा करें शांति को भावना लीएर पेंटिंग करे थे ते बेला को चित्र हो मैं ये चित्र जला मैं आहुति देख तिहर को लगी जिस देश को लगी आप आवाज को लगी आप हक अधिकार को लगी जान गुमाए हाई कति इनोसेंट बच्चा जान गुमाए खोई तो कसले के पाई रह पाने तो अर्क ती दुष्ट जो अ सत्ता में भाई ने भाई लुटे कहींसम धनी होगा रो चित्र मैं जना को कारण ये थी कि जो जो जान गुमाए तिहर देश के तो दीदेन मैं कलाकार ने एटा त्याग दे जो मैं पंद्रह वर्ष साइकिल यात्रा करा थे बोलि मैं मर्चु मैं तेरी नहीं खराने होने तो होनी आई डू रिमेम्बर है अरुले इस रिमेम्बर गए अरुला मार्न भाग पैं आपू बंद खरानी होने समझ तर यो वास्तविकता हमी सब बुझे सायद देश यो तो अवस्था हो देश तो स्वर्ग होने ठा हो I want you to get some sense of where Govinda comes from, and the things he's been through, and the things he's done before doing what he now does. And it's just so complicated to say, you know, Govinda is from is from Nepal. He's from the Te- he's from the Terai region. All those things. Govinda begins really, if I can then repeat just the words there. Um, Govinda begins always drawing, and he was always one of his brothers is is, is here. Perhaps he can um, say that Govinda used to take pages out of the brothers' books so that he could scribble on them. They used to always beat him when they found that he'd taken another page from his book. <laughs> um, but he was always he was always scribbling as a young lad. He basically teaches himself to, to paint, to draw, pictures things, and then he heads off to India as a sixteen-year-old, where he learns to be a sign painter. And he has to go back to Nepal four years later. He is walking around, and that's one of the things I want to talk about. Maybe rather than my giving my version of Govinda's life, I'll give Govinda to tell us some of these little things we saw in the film, um, and we can talk about those things, yeah, and to give Govinda a sense of where we are. Yeah. When you get back to Nepal, Govinda, thank you for coming. When you get back to Nepal and you are still painting signs and making money and yeah. feeding the family and feeding your um, and making sure your brothers are at university and things. 
you're making money as a sign painter and you walk past this man's house one day. Tell me about when you first met um, Keiji Ranjit. Um, well, he's just a few, few houses away from my room. And uh, I saw his beautiful mountain escape. He's very, very well known in, in Kathmandu and very senior artist. In fact, our, his daughter is also one of my teachers in Kathmandu. And see, he, when I saw his paintings, I stopped, I couldn't move from there. And I knocked his door straight away. Say hello, namaste, can I want to be, or I like to paint like you, can, can you teach me? And he said, well, I don't teach, uh, but if you bring some of your drawing, I can, I can guide you something, give you an idea how to be an artist or how to paint. So I straight away, I was, uh, I went back to my room and had some oil color and uh, some canvases, so I paint and take it to his place. And he, he said, have you had uh, any school, schooling? I said, yes, I did high school. Uh, then he said, if you to find that college, there, there would be the proper way to learn how to paint and how to be an artist. Previously, I had no idea what is an artist. I was in Delhi as well, five years almost. I didn't meet any artist there. I was like a sign painter, like a normal people sign paints, uh, do the advertising work kind of thing. So, yeah, so that he just gave me ideas when when I needed it. So that was the seed to, to go, I think. That was the path he showed me to be. Um, in Kathmandu, find that college is still like uh, still there. There's uh, the way the um, you know, traditional way the paint landscape is still alive. Uh, now it's more developed, uh, more open for international uh, like contemporary art. <coughs> There's a lot of uh, happening now. Performance art and other things uh, are always still alive. The I mean uh, installation art. Uh, so many things is now changed. But when I was there, with just a BA degree where we like a traditional way of paint, how to do the still life, how to do paint, landscape painting or portrait painting, that was, uh, that was the way we learned. So. Yeah, yeah. But, well, we, um, the October Gallery, there, there was actually at one stage there was an October Gallery in Kathmandu. Um, okay. The gallery begins in 79. And one of the first um, um, artistic directors here went over to a project we had in, in Kathmandu. They, they built an, an earthquake-proof hotel there. And inside that hotel, the Hotel Vajra, there was a little October gallery. And they used to send Nepalese artists over here. And we would send them various things that we were showing here in London at the time. Chile, wow. Chile remembers these things. But one of, the, one of the artists that we showed, so this is the, this is the kind of art that, that we're really talking about which I think of as sort of traditional Nepalese art. This is, these are done in, in watercolours. Yes. And this, is, this is a simple puja scene. Basically figurative, um, simple, we, we'd say. Um, we look at it as, as rather naive, perhaps. But this is the kind of art world that given, yeah, it comes out of. Yeah, this is the way I used to paint. This is the way that gave me the use of it. So I thought I, this is just, you know, exhibit A, as it were. But, but the, the person that Govinda meets, the person that Govinda meets is this man called Krishna Gopal Ranjit. And so he's going to knock on his, he's seen something drying in, in the street. He knocks on the door. Now you had no idea really who he was. No, I had no idea. No. This, is, this is one of the great artists of that time. And Ranjit was, um, he was, he was totally self-educated. He, he taught himself to paint. He, he also goes to, to India at some stage. He comes back. And he begins to be fascinated by, in Nepal, his, his, his position was that all you can see wherever you are in Nepal are the mountains, the, the Himalaya, this huge, 
this huge backdrop to wherever you are, are these mountains. And Krishna Gopal Ranji becomes fascinated by the mountains and just starts to draw mountains again and again and again. And he, 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 he sort of parlays that fascination for the mountains into becoming the mountain painter. So if you have a, if you want to sell to Nepalese Airways, the Royal Air Nepal at the time, they want him to come paint us some mountains. They want him to design the logo for the airlines. And we would always have a, a Krishna Gopal Ranji mountain in there. Yes, so he's, 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 he's the mountain man, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's from Pokhara. And from Pokhara, yeah. Yeah, so he's very close to Mount Fiskel and Anupana Range. Yes. Where you can see from the from everywhere in, in that city, yeah. in quite big giant mountains. So he, he used a particularly palette life, he make his own way to color, uh, matching color, he make a lot of, you know, different way use, like um, a spiritual way to paint. Yes, yes, and yes. He yes. painting, the way he yeah. yeah. very popular. He was very, very popular and, and very highly respected. Now, I always find it interesting that he, he says, no, I'm not going to teach you, as it were, but you have to go and learn the art first. He sends you to school. Yes, he sends it to me. But yeah. he continues, I think, to give you... Yeah, he inspired me. I used to go because I saw his uh, dedication. He wake every day, 4 o'clock in the morning, go to work, and then come back and paint. Very good discipline with he has. And, um, you know, it's not... To like and you know, go to meet people, but he just wake in the morning, do the work throughout the day. Very disciplined and very difficult to find that kind of person in art to do it all the times. And for himself, he enjoy what he what is he doing now? He's still he paints, he's still alive, yes. he's still painting there. He's very old now. You can't hear, but he yeah. And when I met him, I was very good in oil painting because I was. Uh, of course, because of the sign painters, they use uh, oil paintings, other different media. He suggested me to go to do some watercolor for landscape mm. instead of the oil painting. And um, why was that? Why did he go say go to watercolor? Watercolor is a kind of discipline. Like oil painting, you can recollect or correct. Watercolor painting has uh, to be very very strict and very technical. If you make a mistake, you can't correct it in watercolor mm -hmm. because it has to be layers and layers and layers on the top, but um, and you can't erase or remove it. like transference as watercolor mm -hmm. and uh, oil color is opaque, so you can't do that. Uh, and like paint is like uh, watercolor, so um, well, it is a, it is quite good fun to start watercolor. Um, going to landscape paintings and happen to be a beautiful place to paint. I used to go exactly like wake up at four o'clock or five o'clock, take half a small cycle, I go to village side and do the landscape paintings. And um, that was become my routine. After that, come back to the um, soap. I had a, a small soap to run the sandboard paintings and then go to school, college, and then come back to work again to make some money. So that was uh, my art. So, 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 you, so you run a sign painting shop to pay for you to go to university to yes. study art? Yeah, yes. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting, yes. it's interesting model. Um, so then I, I want to move forward. We'll get, we'll get back to, to, to Krishna Gopal Ranjit. Um, because then when you, so you graduate from from um, Trivavan, and you go on this cycle tour. This is what the film is about. In it, it, it was it was two thousand, yes. It, yes, it, it, was, it was the year of the millennium. So you've you've graduated already, and you get on a bicycle. And I think what was your idea of actually? I mean, most people don't cycle across Nepal. What was the idea behind the trip? Actually, um, because uh, my village is far away from Kathmandu. Normally I go to Kathmandu by bus, night bus, it's like four night to get there. For all day on the cycle to get there, to get my village. So that's why I always see throughout the by bus and window looking the how Nepal is beautiful and all things. I was thinking I may travel that way. But at the same time what happened like you know the 
the behind the cycle to there, the two event very connect, uh, events are connected with my inspiration. One is the uh, the civil war start like a mouse team in, uh, in Nepal. They start killing each other. They attack to the temples and government instructions, instru so like buildings and armies. This, this is this is when it's about ninety six or so. Yeah, no, they started from two thousand same. Uh, yeah. Earlier, I think 1999, they start to yeah. um, go in the war, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the other things like uh, inspire me, like, you know, uh, Nepal. In Nepal, the art is very limited to access to many people. Or many people does not know about art. So, like, my own childhood, like, my parents didn't know about art. <coughs> and there is very limited people, so none in village. But even in Kathmandu, whenever whenever I go to landscape paintings, most people didn't know there is a fine art college. So I thought if I do the cycle tour and stop everywhere and paint in front of the people, it might be um, you know I don't have to tell or talk too much, in giving a straight away demonstration, and they get close or curious about what is happening. So that was a one one reason and. All. And they start the cycle tour, and in, you know the Nepal is a birthplace of Buddha. People supposed to be kind of follow the Buddha instead of unknown people like uh, Maoist. Nobody know Maoist in Nepal. Why killing each other? That's what like one is one hand a political um, stream like you know the the Maoist or this and that. And why not Buddha everywhere? Everybody, people know about Buddha. So that's that's the two that's two main ideas of my cycle tour. So I did it like about three months. Um, they spent three months like uh, eighty days on a cycle. Stopped by like uh, so many places. Had uh, nine so or so in, in in major city of Kathmandu. Oh, so main major city of Nepal. And then, um, you know, make so many group, local artists group for their locally developed, to develop in art or educate in art. So that's, that was the idea as art is more uh, important than the war, so that's the sort of idea. So okay, yeah. so I, I mean, it's, it, it's kind of a one man individual protest against the war was to go and paint. Pictures and so on. So that was that was those the the art that we saw. So this is the early Govinda creating. Uh, you, you were using oil oil paints there. Yeah, those are the oil paints. Yeah. 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 So he loads his bicycle with oil paints and canvases, mm -hmm. and cycles from east to west across Nepal, painting the major sites and showing. He's a one man touring exhibition. Now I want to break from that the film uh, trajectory then. And say that this actually behind us, this is called Lumbini, yes. Blessed Land, and this actually relates to this is this this was painted just 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 recently, yes. Yes. Yeah, so <coughs> but this is yeah. so this is a current work that relates to that tour. Tell me, tell me then about Lumbini, yes, yeah, the sure. place, and when, all that tour. Yeah, when on the cycle trip, like I had to cycle about a few hour. And then I went to the 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 place, the garden it still exists at like a, where the Buddha born, the trees which uh, her mother hold and stand by standing the Buddha born. Mm -hmm. I think that's the legend. Yeah, that's the myth to yeah. tell us. So I S -s sorry, I, just, I mean, I mean I, 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 it needs to be yeah. said that that Lumbini is the place where the Buddha was born, where yes. Siddhartha Sid 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 Gautama. Yeah. It is born. So it's it's a it's 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 the same as Saint, uh, it's the same as Rome. It's the same as Jerusalem. It's it, it's the place to which the Buddhist faithful will always turn. A massive pilgrimage place. Yeah. yeah. So you you cycled there in two thousand. Yes. Tell me about that. So I I went there with the tires. I sleep had some water drinking and same water. The hand pump. We have a hand pump to get the water from the land and then get the same water. I was um, take a race. I was just thinking, you know, how the energy come to the nature. I was thinking, oh, this is the place where the Buddha had the same air. This is the water he might drink. I am here doing something for peace, 
we call 21st century the century of art and peace. I have no yeah. idea what the you know where it's going to go. And I will come and take a rest. What happened when I was um, recently had an idea to do the solo so here before six months, uh, I think six, seven months ago, I was thinking to make something with like large painting. So the when I paint before the color, I started thinking more like a recall of the Lumbini, where the Buddha born. And it's like, you know, the paintings come up like this idea that I have the, the titles of Lumbini and all the imaginations, like uh, my meditations body is there and uh, watching everything, the trees and the sky and the land, the color, the, the atmosphere when I was there is very peaceful. And interesting things when I was in Lumbini, I had uh, followed by the monk all the time, so whenever I paint, when I stand, I start making easels and on those, you know, canvas, he just turned up there, helping me holding my in the easel if there is quite windy or he bring a tea and water uh, during that day. And so that uh, this story behind it so on these paintings the the way is the color I paint the kind of hope of the sky looking at all the stars and universe and our top and the infinite journey of the life or the how the meditation state that take you to there and you feel that you are there or part of there, or you are here is still like that part of there. That's why that sort of idea that I still feel shivering when I think about it, how energy of the room I had and I felt now I feel right now. So to to to, to, to recapitulate a little bit, I, I think this this kind of moves us between the two timelines now because when you were in Dumbini, you were actually you you were painting, weren't you? You were painting the temple, you were painting the banyan tree under which the Buddha was supposed to have become enlightened. The actual tree is still supposed to be it's a huge, huge, huge tree. It's yeah. probably, probably the, the second or third generation, but it's yeah. it's considered to be the tree under which the Buddha gained enlightenment that was there. Yeah. So you were painting what were essentially these these oil representative pi pictures of the scenery you saw, weren't you? Yes, that time. yes. That time I very much details I have to uh, copy from nature, what's the color is there, what country is there, very much replicating the like a uh, constable style, the way that constable paint. Yes. Or yes. think about Turner, how he painted the landscape. So I was uh, divided with them, so I used to paint that way, so very similar way I paint even in Landscape. And then talking about this this month, so so uh, Govinda, Govinda explains in uh, in the, uh, the, the the interview we have in the catalogue that suddenly this monk turns up. And he's whilst he's painting away, doesn't say anything and just just watches him very carefully and disappears and comes back and brings him tea, and then begins and he just every, you you how, how how long were you there for together? I was there about uh, four or five days. Four or five days. Yeah. And he would just continue. He, do, he just he kept just, coming yeah, back. He just appeared uh, yeah. somehow. He just appeared. So I, I <laughs> love this, this, this kind of wraith like monk who just turns up. And there's, there, there are a couple of pictures of you with the monk and yeah. holding a painting that Govinda has done. And did he take you around the temple and things and show you things? Normally he, don't talk, he didn't talk to me, I remember. In, I knew where to go, but he normally don't talk. Yeah. He doesn't talk. He so takes me, yeah, where, you know, I don't remember he, he has any words with me, yeah. but he always there. <laughs> you know, yeah. When I paint, so, start to, he's taking out from the you know, bags, he just turn up. He just turn up. Yeah. So yeah. I, I love this idea of a, of a silent monk who. So, so you didn't you didn't talk at, at any time with him, did you? You didn't you didn't you never found his name? Uh, I don't no, he, I don't think he tell me his name. But he was there uh, when I paint, and uh, very happy person, quietly stand without any distract distracting to me, and I think he's been there to supporting me. Also, when I thinking now, like you know, the uh, why he was there for, or he was just for me to. It never happened in my during uh, 
uh, cycle through. I have like you know the lot of young people used to do the volunteer to do the art exhibitions and they come around to help me to <coughs> display the paintings, but uh, very rarely to have like this kind of uh, um, help. Mm -hmm. So that was only the Rumbi I had that experience. I was always wondering. I mean, just now to get back to the to, to the present, I always thought that the some of this red in here, um, for me, these are monk colours, monkish colours, colours of the colours of the spirituality, colours of religion, colours of the, the temple colours and so on. Yes, normally I we you celebrate or the colour, the red colour is, a, is I use a pigment here. It got for floor scent as well, so that's make a give a sense of the or getting ideas about the holy or pure celebration. If anything, have the victories or like holy, we have color of holy, color of festival. Yes, color. That's what the ideas behind it. Mm -hmm. So that's the. Um, so, so this is this is celebration. This, this is also earth colors. Yes, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And very much like earth color, yeah, that's uh, the Lumbini and the, the land I born in, the color normally is good, very strong yellow ochre type of color. Okay. Then the, the, the clay is very strong yeah. Yeah. type of yellow color. Yeah. So, so you've got, a, you've got a, a memory of that time, but it's not just a memory of the year 2000, it's also a it's a it's a much faster memory, isn't it? Which is yes, why it's quite far. Which is why things kind of open up. You have a you have a huge universal skyscape. Yes. Then you have this 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 landscape, as you say. What what happens then in the center? What, what what's? It's the center. Center is like you know that I always uh, uh, concentrate or meditation type of thing. That when you are, I normally find a space like I mean. Middle of the universe, where the the path taking toward the you know, the eternal light or kind of the realm or, or kind of color. That when I paint this one, I was constantly feeling that way. So that's I left kind of how the sky and the land emerge or become one. You know, like me, I, I'm I there or. They are within me, kind of, to vice versa. Yeah, to, oh, there's, a, to there's, there's, a, there's a blurring of boundaries. Yes, yeah, yeah, below the boundary. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I wanted at least to try to stitch us back to the present day and then mm. return to that 2000 journey. The, the, I suppose, really, I want to talk about just the difference between the paintings that you were doing <coughs> then mm -hmm. and the Lumbini painting that you are producing now, but can we just first head back to in 2000 you produced these 80 or so oil paintings and then the film shows you burning them and it's, a, it's quite a difficult film to, to, to watch when you see an artist just burning his, his work. Um, was that a question that you know you, I've done that style, I've finished with it and I'm going on? No, you seem to suggest it's a little bit more than that. No, it was. It is it's still emotional when I uh, watching myself. I almost feel yeah. Yeah. Uh, very emotional and very sad. But you know, it's uh, it like you know how you attach with the artwork. Normally, everybody attach with uh, something, and I try to um, not to attach because like you know, the every day is that something you, you <coughs> left behind and you move ahead. It's not like getting too much attached, but uh, the idea is burning those paintings like in the 2000 when I was you know giving a cycle tour and telling people why not put the why mouse to kind of logic behind it then in recently 2014-15 the government uh, all the politicians sit down to get there and start making new constitutions and uh, in that constitution they have some kind of um, of uh, disagreement with my own where I born the whole Thai region and they were wanted to have a part and were like a similar kind of right with others what they have 
in the government or certain kind of people they wanted to hold the power by themselves like you know the you could, the Nepal has so many different tribes and different culture and different kind of uh, so they the the that di disagreement in certain part of people they people start to protest the government forced them to and then asked them to kill straight away instead of listening to them in, in the constitution so Almost six, 60, 70 people died yes. Yes. on peaceful um, protest. Yes. I, I felt very, very sad because they, um, this kind of, um, kind of um, groupism or different kind of tribe people, they used to be living together like brotherhood, <coughs> but they, because of the politics, these things um, the the sense of unity, sense of loving and care is lost when come to the right. Who shares what share? There is no share fair kind of things. So I feel very betrayed, and I thought uh, the one I did the cycle through the message of the peace for whole country. Uh, it's, it's still missing there. So I kind of I decided to burn this painting to people who lost their life and giving the symbolic uh, protest or, or the ideas hey this is the artwork which is supposed to be care for people and have um, this kind of sacrifice but it's funny enough the, the these protests is, goes long some people wanted to stop it but didn't come to stop it and doesn't make any value for any other sort of society and they it's easily to allow to burn and uh, I was uh, one where I thought it's supposed to be have a notate or supposed to be make some point and uh, note but that didn't happen mm -hmm. but anyway I was uh, I, I wanted to sell it uh, so they burn it so I burn it yeah yeah so it was a, it was a, a protest, protest against discrimination against yeah. the beginnings of the second class the second class citizen stratum arriving in the new constitution that there was massive discrimination against the people from the, the eastern part, from the Terai region, which is where, um, yeah. which is where the independence from. So art is a kind of protest, but it, you've 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 done other kinds of. I mean, it, it 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 it's very difficult to watch, in fact, but it's it's almost kind of a performance art too, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the, the, the artist the artist who just yeah. destroys his own art because yeah. if you don't value if you don't value me, why are you selling my art? What, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, but you also did during the guerrilla uh, uprising years. You did the yes, same, quite, I did a quite lot strong of, performance. Yes, performance. I had like a couple of installations on that the people got frozen the, during their uh, performance. Yeah, there are like hundreds of people. So they sit there and watch. They, their faces are really, really. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, they they taking in what uh, the performance telling about it. How people dying in the in the cross war fighting, so how the student children are dying. This is how the Maoist or army of you know, the government army they go and kill each other and they, they just let the live bomb in the school field. That's right. I, I mean, I mean, it's the whole it's the whole problem of terrorism. Yes, as, it, whole, as it were. Yeah. But the, the the population, the ordinary population of the Nepal, they were caught in between. The yes. the army and the and the, and the oh, other yeah, yeah. The So it, it was a very it was a very very difficult period. Yeah. So let's bring you over then to you arrive in London in um, in two thousand and seven two thousand and eight and you go to Wimbledon and in Wimbledon you really kind of latch on to what becomes your main I suppose metaphor if you if you like which is the idea of the cloud. I want to. I, I I haven't talked about this, so this is the first time I actually ask actually, actually this question. Um, when you go back to think about KG Ranjit, and he he was the the mountain painter, mm -hmm. and he becomes your mentor. Is there a sense in which you 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 can't really paint mountains anymore in Nepal because Ranjit has done it? But clouds. Well, tell me about how you come to find clouds as a as an area of, of interest, as an area that you're... Actually, when I did the cycle tour with all the landscape paintings, so, and the weather was very important with my journey. I started in winter and then turning, turn up. When I went to the west of Nepal, it's very hot, it's, very hot. It's, it's summertime. 
I burned quite a lot uh, myself in the heat, heat burn. So I wanted to have like a feeling of cold, feel the mountains or just really, really, really cold that I wanted to feel it. So I went to the mountain escape, uh, to like, I went to uh, Mount, uh, the Mount Everest region, uh, Namche Bajar and other places to get, get the idea or oh, get the real feeling of cold. So I uh, went the mountain. Now Chibata is surrounded by the mountains of from all 362 you can see all the gigantic mountains. See the all the top of the world kind of more than 88,000 meter kind of mountain. In the middle I just paint when with a chain I just turn around and paint. Early morning normally I see the whole the all the mount all the mountains are clear and very easy to draw. But as sunrise, the the underneath of or lap of the mountain, they grow like a mushroom type of cloud, and they pop up, edge heat pop up, and by the sunrise, by the 10 a.m., the whole mountain is covered by those mushroom cloud. So there is like you know the, how the heat accumulate or they produce the cloud, and they are more massive or more. I don't know, the more than like a white blanket to cover up the whole mountain. So the mountain is nothing in front of the clouds because between me and the mountain, there's a cloud to cover up everything. So there's some people who truly came to see, and they saw my beautiful painting, so we still not finish it. But they see the mountain, and where are those mountains? They're underneath of the cloud. And they said, is it there? Yeah, it still is there, but you can't see it. So that's kind of logic behind. So, you know, from land to mountain, and then from further study, I went to get stuck in the cloud. So, these are the things they take me to up, from bottom to top. So, that's what the idea is. When I came to study here in Wimbledon, they, I still thinking about how to paint cloud in the painting or the subject. And here in in Wimbledon, my teacher said, you know, there are so many artists already done the cloud paintings. If you go in Middle East, uh, the Middle Age or like 13th, 14th century, cloud used to paint uh, like between heaven and earth. This is the pillar of the. And I was thinking, this is the pillar, it's not only the pillar for the heaven and earth. It's actually, this is a. I thought it's a, because I saw that directly in the nature. It's like you know the the inhaling or a breath in and out kind of things that the cloud produced by the mountains. When the earth breathes in, then rain and breathe out, it's a cloud. That's that's the logic uh, I learned and it's like a spiritual kind of um, idea of the non-materialistic in a way the cloud up, upholds or maintain the nature or everything like climate change, the heat or produce a cloud or that kind of ideas. I was um, and I was thinking of when I start to paint in cloud. So then my painting at the beginning when I was in uh, MA course, they some of the paintings are very much like droplets. You can you feel it like always oh, almost three D you know, three dimensional the way I paint without touching. You won't believe this is a three dimensional two dimensional painting. As a painter, they paint it. And now recently I was. Um, in these exhibitions, I, I, I almost about the sixth year, a last exhibition to now, the painting chains, I moved to London to Margate, uh, had to catch kids. So that, the, the, the painting practice changed a lot. I had to be ready all the time to utilize my time to paint. So I become absent for family and presence in my head to paint. Ah, so this is this is where absence presence comes in. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. They, they, even I'm awake they needed to wake me up. Daddy, daddy, come on. <laughs> Listen to me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or when I go to enter in my studio for for things to take, I instead of taking something I stay there for hours. Yeah. So it's yeah. It's happened so many times, yeah. so many times, so many times. So many things like you know the how they, um, the ideas of um, absence and presence. I've been thinking about 
the dualisms and the the the, the similarism about the uh, Eastern philosophy. That kind of idea is very well, like I'm living in that kind of practical uh, practical logic to see where is the absence and presents and what I am. Either I am with the family or in my studio or with my paintings. That's the that's very much real, <laughs> so, yeah, real yeah, yeah, practice. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things that I th I think um, I, I've, I've tried to I, I want to give some sort of idea of the world, the early world of Nepalese painting, out of which you come, and then the world that you're now revolving in in which. To some extent, I think most people look at these and think they're, they're, they're it's, this is abstract painting. But there's also a sense in which when you're painting a cloud, there are some beautiful cloud paintings in there, we're actually painting clouds. They're, they're, they're no more abstract, they're, they're, they're almost hyper-realistic. So that your paintings operate somewhere between a kind of figuration, the drawing of a very, very realistic drawing of a cloud, and at the same time, you manage to draw in elements of spirituality and metaphysics and thinking and all these things. So, so you 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 you're neither one nor the other in a sense. You're you're using this, but and and all these old Nepalese paintings, they're, they're, they 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 they're very often they're about the spirituality, they're about Buddhism, they're about Hinduism, they're about the gods, they're about these things. In a, in a fascinating way, I think you're still pointing to the spirituality of nature herself. So yes, uh, clouds become that, that that powerful metaphorical place where you can talk about you can talk almost about anything you want to talk about. Can't you? Actually, it's uh, you know the problem we face. Like you know, if you don't know anyone, you really don't know, and. Um, about the spirituality is very, very much the same because of the you think about religions and the philosophy or lots of behind the idea of the god and goddess on here and there a lot of um, have a lecture or listen to anything so read a lot of the sculpture but they all talk about the spirituality is um, kind of that I feel like you know the talking about myself or talking about yourself in, but do you don't talk about self when you read the scripture or, or follow the religion it has kind of idea they talk about themselves instead of the talking about self or I mean the spirituality is about how you think you are the one of one part of the whole universe so you are not a part you are part of the universe you are the one. There is no center of the universe, but if you self stand, then you are the center of the universe because the, the earth is round. If you stand, if you think about yourself, but if you think about others, then it's the problem. Then you lost the spirituality. That my ideas. I try to really think is the self how I feel. How I felt, how I, I feel I am part of the nature, and instead of coping straight away from landscape or looking at the cloud and then paint, I those cloud emerge within me like I breathe in and breathe out, and how my color, color or how my hands move, how things I can see even is unseen. So these are the landscape. Of really, it's very much like a realistic way I paint it, but it's a, it's all like a, in my within my sense of feelings that I try to make happen to see how I feel in, in myself, and I just like maybe it allow to audience to see. Do they think same things? Because I have no paintings and like other re spiritual leader or a spiritual artist does um, does their own way. The my ideas or my own con 
a unique way to present myself is feasible and within me and it does exist and does feel it how how allow others to feel it or not that's why I'm trying to paint how in a daily life we can see it and I, I don't know maybe maybe I think I lost the words when I, because I don't talk when I paint mm -hmm. this is all inside I see the vision mm -hmm. and vision is you know, translated into paintings maybe sometimes I'm very strong and lost myself when I wake I don't know what I paint but the, yeah the skills I, the, I learned from realistic way to paint landscape or portrait that it exists there, I don't know, but yeah, I try sometimes, I feel it very vibe and very connected when I see the painting there, they drive me in and I lost immediately. So it's like, you know, that I would suggest somebody give a little time sometimes on my painting, like I spend month and month, I don't ever get bored of it. And I don't know, doing over and over and over, doing some layers of canvas of paintings and painting. That creates some kind of a kind of a kind of rhythm of layer of the paint. They they reflect differently and they the the gauging so kind of color they play their own part to allow the people to see through it or try to find something which I really feel it like a how the spiritual uh, uh, journey of life. Mm -hmm. Right, well, I mean, this, it, this is one of the things I, I actually love very much about Govinda's work, is that it, each painting is a kind of a, um, a mental journey. And I think, I think what, what, what Govinda's just saying here, and I, mm -hmm. I'm going to pass it over to the floor, um, because he's saying that if you spend a month on a painting, adding layer and layer of thinking, a past, memory, experience, all those skills that you're just lost in this thing and you spend months doing it and then you put it on the wall in the October gallery and it only really works for him if he, if he can download all those things from it, which he can't necessarily, he said. But it's really for the spectator then. Does the spectator in front of a painting of Govinda feel the same kinds of things and so so it's 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 that the, the painting is a communication between you and the person looking at it and maybe something jumps across the gap yes, I think, I think yeah yeah, yeah. I, I, I think maybe that's a that's a moment because because uh, because we, we showed the film earlier a second time um, maybe now is a time to throw it open to the audience and say and to ask people if they have any particular thing um, any particular questions for Govinda? Um, well, I've got a question. Yeah, I think I met you about uh, six years ago. Were you asked in residence here? Something like 2014, 2016, you were Yeah? Yes, were you not? You weren't artist in residence? No, I think, I think, I think Govinda had a, had a show here yes. uh, about yes. six years ago. So you will have been here. Yes. No, but we don't really have artists in residence at the gallery. Yeah. Well, and you weren't here? I thought I met the artists when, when, uh, when I, uh, I came here. <laughs> I mean, I come here every, since I've lived here, I've come here every, to every, gallery, every, every gallery gathering, you know, from 2014 onwards. Okay. And uh, I came in with a group, we'd been up with a walking group on that occasion, we met the artists in residence. I, perhaps I just assumed you were Govinda's Govin Sar, and I got, got the wrong person, I don't know. <laughs> you said you weren't here, but you weren't here. <laughs> Yeah, I had a soul here in 2016. You were? Yeah. Yes, well that's what I remember. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because I said to you, I like your paintings. Mm. <laughs> you. And I bought a, a lovely one of Klaus. It looked a bit like that, but it was blue and white, not red and white. Yes. Oh, good. And it's on my wall and I love it. Oh, thank you. Does it, does it, do you continue to look at it and continue to find new things in it? Well, I, I it, it, it's, um, it's a sort of skyscape of clouds and things. I just, I just loved it. I don't know whether I felt exactly the same as Govinda did, but uh, gave me great, gave me and gives me great pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this this is I was going to say that this is in, in a sense one of the 
the reason that Govinda chose this idea of absent presence for the show was, first of all, there is a, there is a piece called Absence Presence, which is the dualism of what is absent and what is present. But the, um, I, th I think it's, it, it begins with Derrida, who starts talking about when a writer creates a writing, a piece of, a piece of art, that, that it then goes out into the world and the reader reads the art, but the, the writer is always an absent presence. The writer who wrote this thing no longer really exists in the reader's version of the text, except as somebody who, who made it. There's an absent presence in the, the author of the work is always an absent presence, unless he's here in the room and we get a chance to talk and ask him questions. Um, I came here for the exhibition. I spent quite a while looking at the smaller paintings, yeah. and because they talked about you know like nature and Turner, etc. But when I was looking at those, the artist that came to mind, apart from size, was Mark Rothko, and I was thinking some of them have that element of what he would call color field, but that sense of relationships of colour and some sort of banding. Not all of them, but one or two. But if, but one of them, so that was one thing that struck me. But the other thing that struck me is one of the paintings, I think, I'm, unless I misread it, I think it says something like 2013 stroke 2021, not 2020. I thought, is this a painting you, are you sort of revisiting? Yes. And that's it, yeah. Oh, okay. I started in 2013 and left unfinished. Wow. And okay. then recently, when I got a chance to look at those paintings, I needed to retouch. So recently, I think in 2021, I finished it. Right. And I didn't uh, agree really agree with you about the feeling of Mark Rothko. And I, I do feel somehow connect them when we talk about the spirituality in art and the, the nature, the way we inspired regardlessly what background is mine and how, how is his own experience of his own life, the way he painted. But it's like you know, when you talk about the spirituality, it's giving me evidence that this is everything part of one rather than the different Different, different way to look at the nature or talk about the spirituality. So this is a kind of giving me more positive and you know, kind of that I'm on the right path to looking and you know encountering the spirituality into the nature and meeting a feeling the way I paint, how he has been painting actually. So that's what we are doing agree with that. Yeah. Yes, thank you. I think I think Roth was a very interesting person to drop into the mix here. Yeah. yeah. Very, very much so. Please. Um, can I ask, is, is your inspiration, especially with the spirituality connected with Nepal, or do you find, only with Nepal, or do you find anything in England that inspires you in that way? I think the, there's no different in my spiritual or, or my own understanding there is nothing this is the only political barrier to say this is England or or else or it's in Nepal or India or between you or me the whole universe is one I mean whole universe is one and I am part of that universe you can get anywhere from anywhere the spiritual is all breathing and they are being part of it so this I don't see any difference. And also the when when I came here I I had the brought up that's how we see the nature, anything is a god. Even you which I'm not looking at you but I'm looking at your soul, which is supreme soul or part of the God can be all in universes. He made it and I, who made me too. So they are all same. Even this is stone. If you go to Nepal, we pray. We honor to the stone, we honor to the river, we honor to the trees, we honor to the everything, the sky. And so I don't see that any differences from my own 
or being able in my own experience, I don't see the difference in Nepal or in the universe or, or in that. I don't know how, it's because the spirituality, I, I can see that now the wish here in England is more careful about yoga, meditations. In Nepal, that used to be like open university or open for spirituality. Everybody walk around and look at the people. They do the meditation and yoga. That's they lost because they, it was very easily available. And the, the now the modern moderns the, this kind of world like a plural, everything the internet everything lost. They wanted to be like very much Western with the way. Western enjoy the freedom. Now they lost the <coughs> something beautiful things what's in the West they developed, but they lost what they have their own like a spirituality. So I found here the people go to the meditation in the school they teach how to meditate in daily practice. They're making practice here, but in in, in Eastern now they they're losing off it. So it's very different. Way. So I don't think there is a difference between, you know, the now we are here at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock afternoon in Nepal, they were too dark at night, middle of night. So how they move, the light moves, the people's mind move or the education move or knowledge move, the way it rotates itself automatically and they refine the whole earth or universe, how I think it's all part of one, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I know that we're, uh, he's just reminded me that it's seven o'clock in Kathmandu. Um, <laughs> um, one last question. There's often a sense of depth that I find that, we were just talking to talk about Rothko and Rothko sometimes, has these incredible depths that you know don't exist. Because it's a two it's a two dimensional painting. Mm -hmm. But you also appear somehow to be able to create a sense of depth and perspective. You know, if we go back to the Renaissance and the discovery of perspective, it was this great development in the Western art world, but now we can paint 3D paintings, of course we can't. But you managed to do it just with colours and just with but I think I always think there's there's more going on. There's something you do with layers. You talk about spending months on a painting. I could see it here. If you look very closely, these are these are very complicated and crustaceans almost, which is a kind of depth, isn't it? Yeah, you, man you manage to create senses of depth. So that one's seeing through things, one's seeing, one, one feels that there's a sense of parallax error and so on. Yes, I like to create it that way to engage that way to paint because it's one either being a painter and being uh, kind of seeing things which even not exist for them generally how the details of the color how they layer and how they give you the sense of infinity of the everyday life when I look at that way the nature I try to uh, fill it into my painting does it fill it the same things or not and it's very physical things when I to the paint and when I feel it like how the, uh, the infinite journey of deafness I can see through the experience and that's trying to utilize into my canvas to see does, does it other or does anything that I feel it without being too much on that state of mind to being or absence because when I meditate or the, when I lost myself I have no sense what time goes how the color or light or time pass and uh, when I stop and then look at the painting from distance without on that um, state of mind and see if the painting does have that ring or not and then try to bring that kind of ideas allow the other the spectator to feel it how I've been through or how they've been because it's a painting is for me is like a, a mirror to looking at ourselves the self is more important than the painting then um, the way I have experienced so, so mm -hmm. that's that's a kind of um, I don't look at the how other artists been doing paintings and uh, if they are right or wrong I don't know 
Yeah, inspired with how the Rothko Turner and Constable they had learned from the nature, or Ansel Kiefer, a couple of his paintings, or William Blake as well. So they did have the ideas. Do do I get in in my way and when I paint myself, does it happen to me or not? Or the painting bring that kind of reflections which I have been experiencing. So that's uh, that's uh, my my mm. process of the paintings. The color is really also I use oil and acrylic where once think about uh, body and mind the way they don't go together. They always change their own perspectives or the way they are. So that's sort of idea that I try to yeah. try to concentrate in. And I, I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to stop because we 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 can go on and. and if anybody has any particular questions, you can talk to Govinda directly. But um, I just love the way that each of the paintings is its own meditative reflection on some very, very deep things. And uh, I, I, uh, I hope you'll join me in thanking Govinda for telling me. Thank you.